Now, another thing, another feature that you have in Visual Studio Online is keeping track of the work that you have to do. And so you do this uh, on your work tab. You can also do this stuff in Visual Studio in your Team Explorer. You have your sprints. Uh, this is all part of the template that we are using, the process template for Scrum. If you want to add a work item, you go to the Backlog Items tab and you just start typing. It's kind of nice. You can just think of the stories of the work that you need to do, and you don't have to think about pointing or assigning them to users yet. You just start typing in the stories, and you can just hit Enter. You don't even have to hit the Add button. But eventually, you're going to want to go in and edit these things. They're sitting there. you got to put some more detail in there because your developers are not going to like stories with just their titles. So come over here and just double-click on a, on a story, and... And you just you can modify the title. You can change the the assigned to. You can only assign to one user, um, but usually that's probably a good idea because if it's assigned to two people, it's assigned to no one. They both think the other guy is going to do it. Change the state. You only get a few. You only get uh, four states, I believe. Um, the effort and the business value are integer only, so I can't type in a string four hours. But at least it tells you right away. You don't have to hit save to see the, the validation error. Let's change that to 2. And you can change the area. You can create new areas. Uh, for example, if you want to put, put things into epics or uh, releases. In the description, you... You know, you, you follow the normal story writing. You say, as a user, I want to so that... And then you click Save and Close. Just keep doing this on the other stories. You can edit them. You can add even more details to these stories. We have uh, some other features we can add. Choose your Assigned To. You can leave that blank. That's not required field. And here I'm going to be wising up and I'll just be typing in numbers. That backlog priority is a big number, by the way. It's a really well-written story there. It's, yeah, tears are coming to my eyes. Now, you may want to add storyboard tasks. And a storyboard is where you want to describe scenarios in a visual way, um, show things. And, and it, it ties into PowerPoint. So if you, would, if you actually want to create a storyboard, you know, it'll launch PowerPoint for you, and you can create your graphics in there, which is nice. Um, you might want to add a link to an external power uh, or uh, storyboard, but you can't do an HTTP link. You have to do UNC shares. So let's change it to WAC WAC server share, and now it's happy. Test cases uh, are a great way to have the developer and your testers on the same page as to how the story will be tested and what scenarios you're going to look at. Uh, here we're going to just create a test case for authentication, uh, logging in, and uh, you can see there's not a lot of options in those two link types and work item things, but this one will be a log out successfully. allows you to log out successfully if your user's valid. Here is the, uh, the, the beginning of the test case. Let's add some steps. So ensure that you're logged in as, and then you realize, you know, we might want to run these same steps for different scenarios so you can add a parameter and and you can have as many values that you want and let's just say valid user will be the the user we're going to use for parameter one I click on the my account button choose log out parameter one and then should see a screen saying parameter one is logged out successfully but then you say uh, I don't like that name parameter one so you just click down here type in you know, a better name, you'll see it updated all the parameters in the steps. You can delete a step that's not supposed to be there. You can reorder them by just clicking on one and choosing the arrows. Pretty intuitive. You would run these tests on your build server. So um, if your build server is located behind your firewall, it'll have access to your database and your other you know services it can talk to. You can add an attachment to what the expected page should look like. Uh, so, so these these things are also manual tests. You can automate them too using coded UI tests. 
and here's how you would view a, uh, a logo or an attachment, sorry. Let's save these off. And another neat thing is you can add tags to your work items so that you can uh, you know, filter to a particular set of stories that fit together well. So let's tag this story since it has to do with logging in and out. Let's do it a uh, security, good user, authentication. That should give us enough, enough to query on. Um, now I said query and that's uh, actually a misnomer. You can't query against tags. Um, so if you wanted to create a query that's got this, these custom search fields and, and say where tag is authentication, fortunately you can't do that. But you can indirectly get to those authentication stories, but here's how you do it. First you'd pull up the query results and in the corner you'll see a, uh, a filter filter icon. You click on that and then you can choose the tags that you are interested in. In this one we're just going to choose the ones that have authentication and there you go. It, it drilled down to just this one story. Now you might use a Kanban on your team uh, with, a, with a work board. This is a great way to visualize the work in progress, the flow of work on your team. So if you click on board you'll see all the stories originally are in the new state and you can just drag them into the queue that they should belong in. So we just move this story into approved. You can see the whip limit change automatically as, uh, as the stories are dragged in. Double click on them, you can go right to the story and see the details. You can change their state from here. Now remember state and queue are different. They're related but they're different. So sometimes change, you might change the story state but it actually, it actually doesn't change the queue it lives in. It's something to get your head wrapped around a little bit, um, but it's, it doesn't take too long to figure out. If you are versed in Kanban, you know about the cumulative flow diagram and how it shows, um, shows inefficiencies in your work progress. So you can actually have that update in real time as you drag stories around. Here we just are editing stories. Um, Another thing you might want to do is customize your process. Maybe you don't like the cues that come out of the box with new, approved, committed, and done. You may want to rename these. And so you just click on that customize columns and here you can change the work in progress limit. You can change the names. Let's change to committed to uh, in progress. And we'll change whip limits here. The, the number of works that should be in progress at a time. Change the three and four. You can also change the state that they live in. And remember, state and queue are different, and that, key, that might throw you off a little bit. Here you can add a queue. So let's add one called analysis. Set its whip limit to two, and we'll, uh, you know, you can just see that bugs and product backlog items have the same states. What's neat is that queue shows up right away. You can drag stories in it. And then your cumulative flow diagram in the top right corner, if we click on it, you'll see right away it, it reflects your changes that you just made. Pretty cool. I will say work item tracking, it's simple, but it, and it's semi-flexible. It's not as flexible as, as on-premise TFS, but it gets, gets the job done.